All right, what is going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Uh, your guy Cody here. Want to welcome on a special guest from StampyBlue.com, also a good friend of the show, Andrew Thomason. Andrew, welcome on to the show, man. How are you doing? Hey, Cody, I'm, I'm doing well. It's always good to talk NFL football with you, and uh, I'm looking forward to our discussion today. Absolutely. Guys, Andrew and I have been having, I feel like we've been having this conversation over the span of the last couple of days, weeks, and months, uh, all about Indianapolis Colts, all about their free agency approach, all of that stuff. So really excited to kind of sit down with you, Andrew, and talk about this because there's a lot to talk about. You know, I feel like through the text conversations and heck, the conversation we had even before we pressed record, there's a lot of good nuggets of information and there's a lot of just interesting topics to discuss here. But before we get into that episode, guys, I want to let you know that this episode is presented by Prize Picks. So be sure to go to prizepicks.com. Use the code BTJ for a hundred dollar deposit match. But let's jump right into this, Andrew. So I really think our conversation, what kind of sparked this interest in coming on and discussing this further was I sent you a text yesterday, Andrew, because I was listening to uh, Nate Atkins, an Indy Star reporter. He went on the fan yesterday, the radio show, local Indianapolis media, and talked a little bit about Chris Ballard and his free agency approach a little bit. And I know he dropped an article today on the Indy Star website, a little bit more insight into this. And so, Andrew, I it kind of sparked a little bit of a thought in my mind that I hadn't really had before and not necessarily a thought that I 100% agree with, but kind of trying to piece some of the puzzle together for the Indianapolis Colts and their apparent you know, lack of adding guys outside in free agency, right? Because up to this point, obviously, the Colts have only added two guys outside of their own building, Raquan Davis and Joe Flacco. I know a lot of fans are up in arms about Chris Ballard, and there's a lot of things there. Uh, but Andrew, I kind of talked about this, which I know we can jump on first and we can kind of build off of this. But my thought was this, and my question to you is this. So obviously last year, Anthony Richardson, the Colts took him fourth overall. Didn't see a lot of him, but the things that they saw were certainly encouraging. But the fact remains, Andrew, that the Indianapolis Colts, Anthony Richardson, you just didn't see the full degree of what Richardson could become. You know, he didn't play in all 17 games. And so you still don't really know 100% is Richardson that franchise guy just because you haven't seen him. And so I was kind of asking you the question, Andrew, do you think the reason maybe why the Colts have decided to go a little bit more internal, you know, maybe add a guy or two later on in free agency outside of the building, but mainly stay internal and focus on the draft is because they are trying to basically see, number one, is Anthony Richardson the guy? And if he is the guy, we will move forward into the next couple of off seasons and say, hey, we're going to actually start surrounding him with more outside talent. What are your thoughts just on this whole conversation? Because I know there's a lot there with that, but I kind of had that thought process of like, maybe that's why they're approaching free agency the way they are as more of an internal focus than maybe going outside of the building and adding free agents. Like you've seen pretty much every ASC South team do outside of the Colts. Yeah, I think that's that's a great point. I, and I, I do believe that's what the Colts are doing. I do believe that's their thought process is, hey, we saw four-ish games uh, out of Richardson. He unfortunately went down with that uh, season-ending AC joint injury. Uh, the flashes are great, but we need to see more than flashes. So let's bring back a lot of our in-house free agents. Let's make sure that we give him a lot of the pieces, that, that especially on the offensive side of the ball, that he's developed uh, some form of chemistry with. Michael Pittman Jr. being the prime example, right? Three-year, $70 million-plus-dollar contract extension in the offseason. Um, I think that was one of their first dominoes they wanted to knock out, certainly. Uh, and then you look at – you mentioned uh, off-air Jonathan Taylor, for example. Jonathan missed you know a handful of games because of the injury and, and the contract dispute. Um, and then I think he missed a few games or a game uh, towards the end of the season as well. And so – uh, Anthony obviously wasn't playing for the Colts at that point, um, but it's I think for the Colts' perspective, you you have to consider 
you know, Shane Steichen as your play caller, who I think had a really, really strong season uh, for the Colts in his first year as head coach and the the ultimate play caller. Uh, and then you look at some of the pieces that are around Richardson. You know, Taylor's now back in the offense. You have Pittman Jr. You have Alec Pierce, who I think was open a lot more than what some fans may realize. Um, I've gone back and watched some of the film, and and I think, you know, Gardner Minshew was sort of limited in, in what he could do down the field, and that's where Alec – um, you know, for the Colts and their standpoint, that's what he does well is, is kind of gets up and down the field. And then Josh Downs, a, as we highlighted as well, had an excellent rookie year for the Colts. And so I, I think when you just boil it down from a pure offensive perspective, excuse me, you have Richardson and Jonathan Taylor, and you have the emergence uh, of Josh Downs, who, as we've talked about, could potentially take another step for them. Uh, you have Alec Pierce, you have Michael Pittman, you have an offensive line that played pretty darn well, minus maybe one or two games. Uh, they certainly took a, took a step forward compared to the previous season in 2022 where they were downright awful. And so I think if you're the Colts and you're Chris Ballard, it, it, it's not that you don't want to go big in free agency because you have a, a rookie quarterback. It's that Again, we saw flashes from Richardson that we really, really like. I mean, Chris Ballard is on the record saying, you know, Richardson is a legitimate passer for this Colts team, and I absolutely believe that myself. But they have to see more, and I think maybe that could be why they're they're a little hesitant to go spend big in free agency. Uh, it's certainly one of the the, the, um, the bigger reasons. Yeah, and again, like you talked about, you mentioned Jonathan Taylor. I mean, Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor, their overlap, Andrew, was two plays the entire season. So. Really, number one, didn't see Richardson for a lot of the season, but we also just didn't see the combination of Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor together, which I think is quite interesting. Uh, you also didn't see a guy like Jelani Woods, who we would all say we expected when he, if he was going to be healthy last year, he would have you know a breakout type of season potentially. And so he's a guy that you just didn't see. But I mean, ten out of ten RAS score. You know, he was very productive when he was targeted in twenty twenty two despite the fact that the Colts offense was essentially in neutral the entire season, he still showed flashes. And so like really outside, like combined those three players only played two snaps last year together. And Jelani Woods being zero snaps last year with either of them. And so, you know, some of these guys, I think that you just hadn't seen together, I think this is definitely an interesting thing. And it makes sense why, especially offensively, the Colts feel like they're sitting pretty good. Now, is it perfect? Is the offense finished? Certainly not. I think we all expect the Colts to go get another weapon in the draft, whether that's round one, round two, round three. Somewhere around there, we expect the Indianapolis Colts to add another weapon of some sort. But really, I know, Andrew, for a lot of people, the question more does fall on the defensive side of things, where right now, I know there's a lot of youth and inexperience, especially in that secondary Free safety, I know, is a position that a lot of people are feeling very nervous about, and for good reason, because last year it was just an absolute disaster. You know, you had between Rodney Thomas, Nick Cross, a lot of youth, but also a lot of inexperience and a lot of mistakes that happened as well. You, know, you had the same thing with corner, but I think you feel a little bit better about corner with you know a guy like Juju Brent and Jalen Jones as well, who, while they certainly had their rookie moments, they also, I think, played well in spurts. Um, so talk to me about this defense. What do you expect the Colts to do maybe at free safety? What do you expect them to do, you know, when it comes to the cornerback position? Because I know those are some positions, especially for fans, that they don't feel very good about, especially seemingly with the AFC South just adding talent at wide receiver right now. Yeah, it's a good question. I I, I will say I'll, I'll piggyback off of James Boyd over at The Athletic and Nate Atkins of the Indy Star, who who initially reported that the Colts plan to make a move at safety. You know, my understanding is is there was uh, a similar sense there as well. Uh, that move could very well be the re-signing of Julian Blackman on a one-year deal. And, and I don't want to lose sight of, I think, how monumental it is for the Colts. I mean, he's 25 years old played 15 of 17 games for the Colts defense last season before he went down with that shoulder injury, set career highs in tackles, interceptions, pass breakups. I mean, he was excellent, excellent, excellent. And mind you, that's after he was transitioning from the free safety to the strong safety position in Gus Bradley's defense. And obviously Chris Ballard has come out um, on more than one occasion and said, you know, look, I didn't give Gus enough to work with. And I think that's pretty a pretty strong indicator of where, where they may go, maybe in the draft. Maybe they have another another move in them at free safety. I can't say for certain, but again, as been reported by 
Nate Atkins and James Boyd, they, they did plan to make a move at safety. Um, and again, that could very well be the re-signing of Julian Blackman. And they may let Nick Cross and Rondi Thomas, fairly young and, and, as you mentioned, inexperienced players in their own right, battle it out for the free safety spot. And it may come back to to bite the Colts You know, late, later this season. They've got really young corners, as you mentioned, Jalen Jones, Juju Brents on the outside. They've got really young safeties as we mentioned with Thomas Cross in Blackman, but at the same time, you have a veteran in the room with Kenny Moore. I know he plays slot, but but there's, there's a veteran there for the Colts. Uh, you have a veteran option in Julian Blackman, who is young, sure, but but has played in the league for a few years now and has several uh, seasons of experience under his belt. And I just think ultimately – the Colts may may choose to kind of like I mentioned with the offense, they may choose to to roll kind of young for the very same reason. And again, I really what I think it ultimately boils down to is the Colts want to see more from their second year signal caller. They want to see more than just flashes. They want to know within the next probably year to two, as you mentioned, is Richardson the guy for this franchise long term? And, and I think that, that he's certainly shown capabilities, and there's a lot for Colts fans to be excited about, no doubt. But he's got to prove it. He's got to stay healthy, and he's got to go out there and, and continue to improve and progress in year two. I want to go back to just really fast, because I know this has been a point of contention for a lot of people when it comes to the Colts' lack of activity outside of re-signing their own guys. Now, Correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, but when I look at, for example, the other AFC South teams, really when I look at what some of these teams did internally versus what they did externally, I kind of look at it and I say, well, the Indianapolis Colts had a lot of guys that they re-signed that were critical to their success a year ago. And I guess I just don't understand that because I, I look at you know the other teams in the AFC South and really nobody comes to mind of anybody that re-signed somebody who was a major contributor to their roster last year. I could be wrong on that, but I just get the sense that it's just it's just different where the Colts are or where the Colts were coming into this offseason when it came to some extensions potentially and where some of these other teams frankly were when it came to it as well. What are your thoughts on that because I just think people don't necessarily and I know it's like, "Oh, I don't want to hear the excuse about you know, we re-signed our own guys, so we can't do that. But I think we can often lose sight, Andrew, of the fact that, like, and we talked about this off air. Say a guy like Kenny Moore goes and signs somewhere else. Then you're out, you know, one of your best players on defense last year. You know, and fans are just even maybe even more riled up at that point. So I guess where I sit on it is I say, hey, look, you re-signed a lot of your own guys, a lot of guys that were very critical to your team's success last year. And I know there's that. That whole notion of, you know, team run back, why are we doing this? We're going to be worse than we were last year, blah, 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 blah. But strictly from the fact of when you look at where the Colts were contractually wise versus some of these other teams, what they lost versus what they gained, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's a great point. I think, I think, and I mean this respectfully, fans of the AFC South, Colts fans, Texans fans, Jack fans, Titan fans, you know, Everybody, I guess any fan in the NFL, frankly, wants their team to go out when they have cap space and spend big money and make big splashes in free agency, a la Tennessee with LeJarrius Sneedy and Calvin Ridley, Jacksonville with Darnell Savage and Gabe Davis, Houston recently with uh, Stephon Diggs, the, the trade they made just yesterday for the Pro Bowl receiver. Uh, Joe Mixon, you, you know, yes, th- these are great players and they're big names, but when you look at them, you know, from a – pure uh, face value, right, standpoint, they're adding these players outside of maybe Stephon Diggs to, you know, in the Texans case for like the Jaguars and Titans, they're, they're adding these players because they lost uh, players at the, at those respective positions in free agency. Houston lost Devin Singletary and replaced him uh, with Joe Mixon. The Jaguars lost Calvin Ridley to Tennessee and replaced him with Gabe Davis. Like, Daniel Hunter replaced uh, Jonathan Grenard at Houston. Uh, so you have, I, I mean, these moves that are being made, are they better on paper? 100%. No question. These teams have gotten better, but it's not as if they're going out and handing out blank checks to, to you know, Christian Wilkins or, or some of these other star players that have signed early on in the first waves of free agency. They're simply, I think, in my mind, replacing players that uh, are replacing uh, positions where they have holes because other players have left and gone and gone elsewhere. 
As we said, guys, today's episode is sponsored by Price Picks. Now, what is Price Picks? Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Instead of battling against thousands of other players across platforms, you're basically picking two to six player stat projections, and you're choosing more or less on those stat projections to be able to watch those winnings roll in. It's very easy. Do you guys want to play along at some of Price Picks? Favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and UFC fighter Sugar Sean O'Malley. Well, if you guys sign up today, you can find the community plays under the promos tab of the app to view the entries of some of the biggest names on the platform and be a part of that as well. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 just like that with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Like a lot of other things, guys, they also offer injury insurance, so your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. So if someone exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player projection won't count against you and the rest of your entry stays live. So it's great it bounce back for that one. What I love about the app as well, guys, is it's not just sports like NBA, NHL, football and tennis and all and baseball and all these other things but there's also a lot of others that go into it as well. If you like to place entries on video game situations like Call of Duty, CS2, Apex, if that's something that appeals to you. There's a wide variety of sports and video games and everything else that you can place entries on. And I love how expansive it is. Even just looking at the NBA, there's entries you can make with turnovers, with points. You can do combo deals, dunks, field goals attempted, all of these different things. So there's just so many different ways to make money off of these entries. Be sure to download the app today and use code BTJ for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use code BTJ for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, it's sponsored by Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Yeah. One point you made, and I know I have to read this article, uh, it was from Brett Coleman. Um, he talked about the fact that when you look, for example, at Jacksonville's 2020 draft, you know, teams having to supplement for failed draft classes. Now, I'm not saying the Indianapolis Colts have had this amazing 100%, you know, like they've been incredible at drafting because they still have some guys that you're like, you'd like to see some more from certain players. But when you look at them, heck, when you look at you know, teams like Tennessee, you know, who obviously we know they haven't had some great drafts as of recent either. And, and then even with Houston, you know, I know this last year they had a phenomenal draft with CJ Stroud, Tank Dell, all these different guys. But when you look at some of these contracts that would be due for some of these draft classes, I think you look at it in comparison to Indy. And like I said, Indy's not been perfect at this. But Indy has a lot more players that they have brought in and they have drafted that have been worthy of contract extensions, that have played at high enough levels where Indy feels confident enough in them that they can be a part of this team's future and they don't have to go out and sign you know, these big-name free agents necessarily because they have a lot of their own guys now who deserve, and rightfully so, some of these bigger contracts. That's kind of where I sit on it. I like... I'm not saying Indy's been like this incredible, you know, every single year they're getting these all pro players or whatever, but I think it's just a different kind of place where Indy is when it comes to drafting in the last couple of years versus where maybe some of these other teams have been, uh, you know, when it comes to drafting as well. Yeah, it's a great point. And, and I know we did discuss that off air a little bit. Um, it's something that I saw this morning and I thought it was an interesting point and, and major credit to, to Brett Coleman, who's excellent, excellent at what he does. Um, no question. But yeah, with Jacksonville, the, the draft that he pointed out was their 2020 draft with CJ Henderson and Caleb on chase on and no disrespect to them, but they obviously didn't earn a second contract in Jacksonville. They didn't pan out the way the Jaguars hoped. And when you run into a situation like you had mentioned, Cody, where you're Jacksonville and you miss on almost an entire draft class. And we know that because only a handful of players, maybe one or two are left from that draft class on their roster. 
you, you find yourself having to sort of supplement for those misses. You find yourself having to go out and pay big money to Christian Kirk, which we know was a good uh, a good deal, you know, in hindsight. But but you know, at the when he was first paid that money, I think a lot of people were kind of scratching their heads. Gabe Davis is another intriguing signing, uh, a good player, good receiver from Buffalo for Jacksonville. But again, that's because they lost Calvin Ridley and they missed on a couple of the receivers. LaVisca Chenault is a name that comes to mind with, that they've drafted in the last couple of years. And and I think that's where you potentially find yourself into trouble where it's, you know, it's okay, well, we missed on this guy. We missed on this guy. We have to plug this hole somehow. Now we've got to go hand a boatload of money to this guy over here that might not be as good as we expected this other guy to be that we originally drafted. And now that's where you potentially find yourself in bad contract situations. And I'll echo kind of what you said. The Colts and Chris Ballard have been far from perfect with with their draft record. Uh, I think that they've been very good, hence the number of second and third contracts that they've handed out to top players like Michael Pittman Jr., Kenny Moore, even though he was undrafted, Rover Stewart are, are names that come to mind, right? But then again, you mentioned some guys that you, you know. I think the Colts want to see more from. Cody Pay is a name that comes to mind, a first-round pick out of Michigan a few years ago. Excellent run defender. I think there still leaves a little bit to be desired in the Colts' eyes from a pass-rushing standpoint. That's why they brought in uh, Charlie Partridge, defensive line coach, this offseason, uh, because I think they they expect Cody Pay and Dio Dengba, for example, to take that next step. But ultimately, I think, yeah, what it boils down to is, is you, ha- you have to have hits in the draft. Um, you have to find players in more than just the first and second and third round. And if you don't, again, you, you find yourself in a little bit of a scramble mode. I, I guess to just very quickly address your point from earlier, the Colts have to find a happy medium. I mean, the results eventually what the results are. It's one playoff win. It's no division titles. I mean, th- these are these are when you look at Chris Ballard's tenure as Colts general manager from 2017 to now, you're, inter- you're entering, pardon me, year eight of that tenure. And re- the results are going to matter. But I don't know if if the Colts feel like they're in a position where they can go out and spend big, I mean, Stephen Holder for ESPN reported they would, that they were all in on Daniel Hunter and offered him more money than what the Texans did. But because he has home ties to Houston, he signed with Houston. You know, there's nothing that in the Colts minds they can do about that, that sort of thing. And so again, if you're Chris Ballard, if you're the Colts, you have to find a way, you know, in my opinion, I think to have a happy medium. There's got to be some sort of uh, more additional moves, I think, in free agency, whether it's this year or moving forward, as as well as as the the NFL draft. I mean, excuse me, I know a lot of other reporters have brought this up. If you're the Colts, you want to go into the draft and you want to say, okay, well, we don't necessarily need this position. We can kind of take best player available or somebody that we can really think you know help our offense with with, with Shane Steichen and calling plays and, and so on, right? But now because they're pretty young at corner, they have a need at free safety. Um, in a lot of people's eyes, I mean, you you maybe find yourself where you're at pick 15 and you have to take a Terry on Arnold out of Alabama or a Cooper DeJean out of Iowa because you haven't addressed some of those other positions. Yeah, oh, certainly. Absolutely. Like We're not arguing here that the Colts and like I said, I, I don't necessarily agree with, you know, fully just going in, you know, to your own guys all the time. I certainly think there is a time and a place. And I think, Andrew, we talked about this as well. You know, if if Anthony Richardson say this year plays in seventeen games and proves that he is a long term piece, I do get a sense that Indianapolis will be a little bit more all in when it comes to some of their free agents. I mean, this was I I think out of all of the classes, uh, Andrew, that I can think of uh, in recent memory for the Colts, this was one of the like more lucrative free agent classes in terms of their own guys. And so when you look forward into like next year, it's not as great of a class where you're going to be handing out, you know, 70 some million dollars to a Michael Pittman or whatever it is, you know, like you're not going to be handing out over 20 million dollars to, you know, insert player here necessarily. Uh, And so I think that definitely does you know, point to potentially Indianapolis next year looking to supplement a little bit more. But again, we'll see. You've said that in the past and we'll see. But uh, I wanted to point to one more thing, Andrew. We talked about, you know, the 2020 classes. You know, Indianapolis, obviously, we got Michael Pittman Jr., you know, Jonathan Taylor, and then you had Julian Blackman with the first three picks that they had. And all three earned contract extensions with Indianapolis this year. When I was looking at the Houston Texans, Really, outside of Jonathan Greener that year, nobody else on that on that draft class was anywhere near even consideration for a second contract. Same with the Tennessee Titans. That was the year when they took Isaiah Wilson, 29th overall. They had Christian Fulton, right? And so th- there was just not a great draft class from then. So you know what I mean? Like, 
when you look at these two draft classes, you already mentioned Jacksonville's, all three for these AFC South teams were eggs. They were they were terrible, terrible draft classes. And in comparison, the Indianapolis Colts absolutely nailed it that year. And so I, I get what you're saying when it comes to that, going back to just re-signing your own guys. And, you know, if you do, and I think that's what we saw even from like Ryan Grixon, which I know, you know, a lot of people, you know, saying, oh, you got to find that happy medium, which I agree with that between a Ryan Grixon who, you know, spent recklessly and Chris Ballard, who doesn't like to spend, you got to find a happy medium between that. But again, Ryan Grixon, if you remember, Andrew, his draft classes were terrible for the most part. And so what did he have to do? He had to go supplement in free agency. And he, I think there's an argument to be made. He over supplemented. He paid some guys past their prime. But again, that's what happens, and that's the reality. If you want to keep your job, you're going to have to hand out those contracts because you're certainly not going to be handing them to your own guys, right? So I totally understand that line of thinking and where the Colts are. Don't necessarily agree with it. I, like I said um, a couple times already, there is that happy medium you've got to find. And Chris Ballard and company, they got to figure that out. And, and maybe they still will. You know, there's still a couple options out there at free safety. Hopefully they do sign a guy like, you know, Justin Simmons, Quandre Diggs, somebody like that. And then they do just focus all their efforts on some of those positions we already mentioned. But Andrew, any other thoughts, man, that you have here when it comes to, you know, Chris Ballard, the Colts free agency approach, Anthony Richardson, all that stuff that we talked about. I know we talked about a lot of different stuff here, but any other thoughts you've had there or anything you want to kind of build off of? Yeah, just one last point. I, I, and, I, and I've said it, and I know you've said it as well. There has to be a happy medium there. You have to, if you're Chris Ballard and you're the Colts, you're entering, you're entering year eight, you have to find a way to incorporate both free agency and the draft to help uh, upgrade your roster and put pieces around Anthony Richardson to make sure that he has the best possible chance at being successful over the next two or three years. And, and here's the other thing. I know there were some Colts fans, understandably, I know that there were some Colts fans that were disappointed with the Colts' lack of, of free agency moves, with Raekwon Davis and Joe Flacco being the only outside signings. Uh, however, I, I, again, you know, two hundred million plus dollars that the Colts spent and bringing back nine of their own in-house free agents, all of players uh, outside of maybe two or three that are more rotational pieces. Six of the nine, you could argue, are absolutely core foundational players. I mean, Kenny Moore was on the side of Lucas Oil Stadium. Jonathan Taylor, who got an extension last offseason, on the side of Lucas Oil Stadium. Michael Pittman is an important piece. Grover Stewart is an important piece. And as we mentioned earlier, if you're signing a Legere Sneed or a Calvin Ridley, I don't think the Colts were in on him, but just as an example, if you sign those players and you give them massive, ex massive contract extensions, do you potentially lose like a Michael Pittman Jr. or a Grover Stewart or a Kenny Moore? And then who are you replacing them with? And as you mentioned earlier, now you have holes at slot corner. You have holes maybe at number one receiver. You have holes in a lot of areas where, you, frankly, with a rookie quarterback that still has a lot to, I think, prove in some ways, uh, you don't want to have holes in those positions. You want to have as much continuity uh, at those positions as possible. And I think, again, if Richardson can stay healthy this year for the Colts and, and play well, and so again, he, he certainly showed a lot of flashes and, and there's certainly reasons for Colts fans to be ecstatic about uh, what Richardson could potentially become, especially with Shane Steichen as his mentor and play caller. But he's got to prove it. He's got to go out there. He's got to show it. And I think the best way to do that in the Colts eyes is to uh, bring back a lot of the players and a lot of the pieces that they did. Yeah, and I do think the Colts do have a lot of nice support around Richardson, like we talked about. You know, a really good offensive line that had a nice bounce back season last year. You know, one of the best running backs in football who still is in his prime. You know, a number one wide receiver locked in for the next number of years. You know, obviously Josh Downs coming into year two, who we really like a lot, and they definitely were developing that bond. And we do think they're not done, you know, when it comes to the offense. And, you know, and there still is an entire draft as well, Andrew, an entire seven round draft for the Colts. Colts are going to add some pieces to this team. So it's not like it's going to be this direct, you know, like we said before, you know, run it back completely. There's going to be some different pieces here. But again, like you said, and I'll emphasize this as well, like results matter at the end of the day, right? And if you go into year number nine next year, you still haven't won the division. You know, you still haven't made the playoffs in the not last number of years. I mean, I understand the frustration from fans. Don't want to dismiss that or discount that. But I think I now fully understand where the Colts' plan is and where they were going. It's a little confusing at first, but it makes a lot of sense now kind of where the direction the Colts are, what they want to see from Anthony Richardson. And if he can, you know, show that he is that guy this year, 
I think there's a great chance the Indianapolis Colts look to next offseason and they say, hey, you know, we're going to we're going to add a couple more guys here to help support him. Now that we know 100 percent, he's our guy. He's shown us that for 17 plus games and we can move forward confident now that we can use this window that he has in his rookie deal to you know build around him the best roster that we can. So but that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Andrew, thank you so much for coming on. We really do appreciate this, as always. Why don't you tell everybody where they can find you, find your work, and all that good stuff? Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, you can find me uh, find me on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it now. Uh, my first and last name, at Andrew underscore Thomason. Um, you'll find all my, my coverage for the Colts, um, stampedeblue.com. Plenty of uh, content to come between the rest of the offseason, the NFL draft, and, and potentially uh, training camp, which, believe it or not, is just a few months away. That's crazy, man. I know it's why I, I, it kind of just snuck up on me the fact that the NFL draft is this month. Like, I, I haven't fully comprehended the fact. I think just all the free agency drama and all that stuff, you kind of get focused and locked in on that. And then you kind of miss out or don't realize until, hey, all of a sudden we're in April. It's only a few weeks away, which is definitely exciting. But, guys, be sure to go check out Andrew and his work. He does great things over there at StampyBlue.com. Andrew, appreciate you coming on, man, and we'll have to do it again soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's always fun talking NFL football with you. Yes, absolutely. And, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. But thank you so much for tuning in and appreciate all your support. And, as always, guys, go Colts. Yeah.